I heard this one rumor that you live in a military building, like an, an old military complex that you sort of took over and that's where you live. And I want to believe that's true because it's one of the coolest things I've ever heard. Is it true? It is true. Uh, and thank you for bringing it up because now even more people will come to the house to say hello. Uh -huh. uh, but yeah, I, I, I bought an old uh, Air Force base. It's a former top secret Air Force base. I'm a little more than that, Kevin. Uh, Look How Mountain Laboratory was a top secret uh, U.S. Air Force installation uh, nestled up in Laurel Canyon, uh, the existence of which remained unknown until fairly recently. It was built uh, World War II years, I believe, initially as a uh, anti-aircraft installation to protect uh, Los Angeles against a possible aerial attack uh, during World War II, and then it morphed into a film studio at some point and was said to be the world's most complete uh, self-contained uh, film studio. The main purpose, uh, according to various sources, was to process the uh, raw film stock from the early atomic uh, bomb tests, the nuclear weapons tests. But that doesn't really make a whole lot of sense because, like I say, this was a, a fully operational film studio that could, capable of doing everything in-house. They had, you know, every animation department, editing facilities, film vaults, you know, sound stages, every, everything everything to make a film from soup to nuts and you know to process raw film stock all you really need is a dark room could have been anywhere you know there was no need to fly that film all the way you know to this remote uh, outpost in, in Laurel Canyon that that was a fully functioning film studio so obviously there was a lot more going on there than than what has been acknowledged the birds in Buffalo Springfield the doors love the mamas and the papas um, to check out the work of dave mcgowan uh weird scenes from inside the canyon and mcgowan who unfortunately passed away uh, a few years back i think it was maybe two years i, I don't know exactly maybe I believe. Now, yeah 15. uh he draws out some very interesting facts about the early scene that was coming to shape what would later be more associated probably with the hate ashbury scene in san francisco uh, but it was it had its genesis these bands all had their genesis in a little area in outside of la known as laurel canyon and laurel canyon is a fascinating place well one of the strange things in the book that you mentioned is that uh, people like john way marilyn monroe uh, these guys had uh, ID passes. I get what what were they doing there? Were they narrating things? That's, Why would they that's need good, to yeah, be a part of this? Yeah, some uh, some some real heavyweights from Hollywood. Uh, you know, uh, performers like Marilyn Monroe, John Wayne, as you mentioned. I think Jimmy Stewart and and uh, and very heavyweight uh, filmmakers uh, like I think John Ford and um, I don't know a couple others. Uh, were involved. They had yeah, they had security clearance to work in this facility, and yet no one seems to know exactly what they did there. Goodbye, Norma Jean. No, I never knew you at all. You had the grace to hold yourself. Did Marilyn Monroe do the casting yes. couch? Yes. Come on, you've had a loose bias. She did the casting couch from when she started, you know, from when she was like 17. She said that famous line. What'd she say? When she got her, uh, her contract with, um, with Fox, she said, well, that's the last cock I'm gonna have to. <laughs> Hello, cut. No, <laughs> Ooh, no please. That's the last cock I'm ever having going to suck. No, cut again. No, no, that's Pete. The <laughs> that's the last cock I'm ever gonna have to suck. Crawled out of the woodwork And there was Hollywood. <laughs> well, the first time that I had an experience was with two very, very famous megastars, and it was at um, a party, and uh, I was very new in town, and I was 21, but I was still quite innocent, and I was wearing an off-the-shoulder top. And um, these two guys, I mean, they were so famous. I can't tell you who they are because your lawyer said I'm not to mention any names. Right. Uh, and she, I said, because I wanted to make conversation, oh, I don't really like this music. And one of them said, 
and I don't really like this. And he grabbed my top, which was elasticized, and pulled it like that. Oh, and the other one laughed at me, and I felt so humiliated. I, I just ran away. They set you on the treadmill, and they made you change your name. Marilyn had been so abused uh, by men oh, and had so done awful. so many things um, to get roles that she hadn't wanted to do. And most of these men, Holly, were fat and old and ugly and hideous. So let me ask you this. What is happening in Hollywood? Marilyn had been so abused. It has been said by insiders that Marilyn was one of the first programmed presidential models created under mind control for sex with presidents and use in Hollywood connections. Marilyn Monroe was a monarch sex slave. It is public knowledge that she was sexually abused as an orphan, but it has been skillfully kept from the public that she was a presidential model monarch slave. President Kennedy found her more entertaining than Jackie. Despite her fame, Monroe was a deeply unhappy woman. She was adored by many, but did anyone really know her? She was incredibly lonely. Born Norma Jean Mortensen, Monroe's life was marked by tragedy. Abandoned by a mentally ill mother who had once tried to attack her, Monroe grew up in a series of foster homes before getting married at the age of 16 and dropping out of high school. This, along with the fact that she never knew her father, further contributed to her isolation and her desire to have a family. She had, you know, mental disturbances and she was taken away. I called every woman I would see, I'd say, oh, there's a mama. And if I see a man, I'd say, there's a daddy. One morning I was having a bath, actually, and uh, I referred to the woman as mama, and she said, I'm not your mother. Don't call me mother anymore. Call me aunt so-and-so. And it seems to me you lived your life like a candle in the wind. Never know who to cling to when the rain set in. I think that what we're dealing with is a generation of victims. It's like Russ Dizdar talks about when people are programmed by these Luciferian handlers. Part of the programming is that they become a Satanist themselves or a practitioner of witchcraft. Jay, do you have anything you want to say about the, the prior history of Laurel Canyon uh, before the 1960s? Well, there are uh, older precedents that Dave does mention, for example, Houdini. Mm -hmm. Houdini mm -hmm. was a uh, Laurel Canyon resident. Appa apparently, he was also a Mason and to some degree worked as an intelligence asset. I want to say, if I recall, was it uh, Scotland Yard? I think that is, is who McGowan says. You know, there, there was also reportedly strange deaths, I think, that, are, that occurred in the vicinity of uh, wherever Houdini lived in, in, in the canyon. As I was telling you guys before we started, I went a couple of years ago, two summers ago at this very time, I was in California and we were checking out Lookout Mountain Studios and uh, Wonderland Avenue and Mahon Drive and uh, Rand Corporation and all that stuff. Uh, and you, you do get a weird vibe. You know, you, uh, you also have the Vacaville prison facility in the same uh, vicinity. 
and that was there, at least there's some indication that this was connected to mind control experimentation the air force basically having its own private secret studio and of course you have uh, walt disney Cary grant uh, jimmy jimmy store and uh marilyn monroe all having basically dod clearance access to to come to Laura Kent Studios. It's very. It's a very important thing. It's not something you know, irrelevant to American culture. Uh, we we don't even know all the stuff that was filmed there and what its purposes were. So you know, there's a lot and of some of that surrounding it. Uh, there was allegedly over nineteen thousand films made in this right. uh, government facility, and this was beginning in the nineteen forties. Right. So what ended up happening with respect to the music scene and the music. People looking at this in the current year may think that the mass migration of various aspiring musicians across the country to this little canyon in outside of Los Angeles uh, was because it was big, a big place to be. But the thing that's interesting is that it was not actually at the time. Right. This this was created from scratch because the the centers of music in America were places like Memphis and New York. CIA created my popular culture And they're so in love with black arts and Crowley Illuminati wants my mind, soul, and my body They can't have it, they can't have it, no I belong to Jesus Christ and I was commissioned to preach his gospel and expose the wicked ones who serve ways more than a ton. The battle's already won. Jesus is my savior. And until all you watching this now know him, you're fast asleep, kid. Fast asleep, fast asleep, fast asleep, fast asleep. Secret society always trying to keep their eye on me, but I'm gonna stay safe under the wing of the most high. Most high, most high, most high. kind of have in California a military industrial complex state you know the, the whole state is pretty much run by uh, you know the Navy and, and these these the deep state so to speak California is kind of a lab experiment a test bed for mind control experimentation mind control experimentation mind control experimentation things to come in the rest of the country 20 or 30 years later you know it kind of starts there and then it like a virus it sort of spills out to the to middle America uh, same with New York it was not hard to believe uh, especially with the Air Force uh, studio being there, uh, that that even then it was intimately connected to Hollywood. You know, the, the highest people in Hollywood were coming to to Little Canyon, uh, and so it's not hard to believe that they could set up a, a test bed for a burgeoning revolutionary music scene. Turn on, tune in, and drop out. Fast asleep. Fast asleep. Folks, it's so obvious. Create the problem, provide the solution. Start the war in Vietnam, lead the protest. Create a war on drugs, create a counterculture revolution for people to consume drugs. Sell them the drugs, lock them up. In every single instance, you retain the power. And it all is about power with these folks. And now we can see a new world coming into view. A world in which there is the very real prospect of a new world order. In the words of Winston Churchill, a world order in which the principles of justice and fair play protect the weak against the strong. Protect the weak or against the strong. Out of chaos. Former U.S. President George H.W. Bush has been accused of sexual misconduct Again, a woman says he groped her as she took a photo with him some 14 years ago. Order out of chaos, but we... Chaos, but we asked, but we... The uh, magic date, I mean, that comes from Terrence McKenna, who was one of the LSD... V uh, he, he was, and he, of course, was promoting these heroic doses of these psychedelic drugs, enough literally to produce psychosis, when it was determined later on that he wasn't taken, even though it looked... Well, really, really? Terrence yeah. McKenna wasn't taken the acid trip? Of that course he was... not. Oh. Of course not. His brother admitted that, that, no, he hadn't taken any drugs in 20 years. In fact, he mainly just drank booze. This really shouldn't surprise anyone, because the entire psychedelic movement was vetted. It comes out of the CIA project MKUltra. 
um, Robert Hunter, who was the lyricist of The Grateful Dead, and that therefore they had to follow his uh, instructions. They are both known as employees of the organization. Um, guy Gordon Wasson, you know, interested in psychedelic drugs. Now, it just so happened he was also the uh, director of public relations and the vice president of J.P. Morgan Bank, and was also the head of the Council of Foreign Relations, right? So, a little suspicious. But then, as it turns out, with the Freedom of Information Act, you can find out that Lawson's entire uh, uh, development of uh, the psychedelic mushrooms in Mexico was this MK Ultra project. And this isn't um, open for contention. I mean, the, the, the letter exists showing that uh, Wasson arranged it for funding for all of the trips to Mexico through the CIA and MKUltra. And so you have to say, well, what are they doing? You know, why is uh, all of this psychedelia, you know, such an important thing? Well, it turns out that they really wanted to start developing the neo-feudalism um, probably right after World War II. Um, Gregory Bateson, who was Margaret Mead's husband, against using the Freedom of Information Act, uh, letters have been found. They're published in a well-known book called Weaponizing Anthropology by Dr. David Price showing that Bateson actually, though he claimed to be a, a proponent of psychedelic drugs and a big humanist, right? He's, he's always you know, telling people peace and love, speaker at the Esalon Institute. Now, in his real life, um, he was instructing the government of the United States and Britain in how to operate a more effective slave colony. And in the letters that the Price has found, it shows Bateson describing experiments uh, of the Russian government on their Asiatic populations to determine how they can best be kept in a slave state. And he says that the experiment that showed the best of a inferior population, he uses that expression, that exact term, being controlled by a superior population was that you had to develop a native revival or an archaic revival. In other words, you don't want the inferior people uh, being jealous of the technology that the rulers had. Rather, you wanted them to embrace their past, right? So this was um, was why you have Bateson being at the very first meetings where MKUltra is established, uh, evidently explaining to them how to do it. You then go on until you have all of these um, uh, rock and roll people who just come out of nowhere that, that give away LSD for free. And in the midst of all this, you have this philosophy about peace, love, returning to the commune and living off the land and kind of abandoning technology. And so then you have the same phenomenon occurring up in San Francisco where you have all of these people, the Grateful Dead and Ken Kesey and uh, LSD being given away en masse. And I mean en masse. I mean, the Grateful Dead would have hundreds of thousands of taps that they somehow miraculously had and they just gave it away to everyone for free. So what's going on here? Well, it's the archaic revival, brother. You're looking at your government in action, and they're trying to dumb down the population to drop the new out of world order.